All right, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to us. Another build here, guys. We got a 99 Jeep Cherokee 4.0. We're doing a head gasket on it. And some of the hardest things we're coming across now is the intake. It just sucks. Um, There's still, let me, let me take it from there. Hold tight. All right, we're going to hold tight here for Ben. In order to take this animal apart, here's what we're dealing with. This is the intake. This is obviously sitting right here. So what you need to know is underneath this intake is the exhaust manifold. These Chrysler engineers decided, hey, let's put these together. We'll save bolts and, well, I don't really know why they decided, but here we are. So there are five bolts that hold this on. You can see five of them across the top. It's the ones below that you can't see that are, make this job such a, a difficult task. The good part is three of them are bolts like this, which means they're literally clamping that on there, which means this will slide out from it. So long story short, short version of it, the bottom two on the ends are studs. Remove the bolts, loosen the middle three, and this will slide out. Maybe I oversimplified that, but that's the general idea. There are other things that will have to come off for, uh, convenience purposes we have removed the air intake so there would have been an air intake right here we have removed all of our um, wiring devices and the vacuum hoses minus that one now it's good the other piece is the power steering pump will have to be removed because it bolts onto the intake here as well so power steering pump here there's three 13 millimeter bolts that hold that on Obviously, you'll have to remove the belt. Full disclosure, Tim and I, we're great at what we do, but we are not responsible for, nor do we intend to make this to where you will become a professional by doing it. We're just trying to give you some how-to tips on and what you're looking for, because as you're looking in here, you can't see the bolts from underneath. So uh, it's very difficult for you to understand how this comes apart. So if we know how it goes together, we can know how it comes apart. So with that being said, our purchase includes one Felpro 9076PT1. Felpro did not endorse this video, although they are welcome to. <coughs> and that's gonna be the gist of it. So the overall thing is obviously intake manifold, gotta go. Exhaust manifold, gotta go. But that's easy once you get the intake off. Power steering pump, gotta go. Alternator, gotta go. There's three uh, heater hoses. Hang on, there's one. Well, this technically that's a radiator hose, but there's three hoses. Radiator hose, heater hose, heater hose. All those three have to be removed. For convenience, I always just push the little clamp back up on there so it can't fall off, shove it over here out of the way. And then it starts draining. Fantastic. I thought I'd already drained. Next, you'll have to remove this is a coil pack, uh, what would you call that? It's a, it's a, a row of coil packs, so it's the coil pack assembly. Mm -hmm. So there are four bolts holding those on. And then once those items are removed, we'll be able to remove our um, valve, cover. valve cover. Then we'll get into the valve train. And we'll do this for you, you know, step by step, so you can get to the part of the video that you're stuck on and, and see what you need to see. But for general purposes, you can see I have already disconnected all my clamps or all my wiring. Injectors. This, this just pops off. I will not be disconnecting the uh, quick disconnect, the Chrysler disconnect. What I do here is I will remove this um, uh, intake uh, unit and I will slide it over here to the side. It'll just be easier for you by doing that. And that's four bolts, these four bolts right here. So those four are what holds it on. And after you have removed all of those components, the rest of the job is simple, right? It's removing a head and it's putting on a gasket, putting head gasket back. They do recommend the replacement of the um, head bolts. We have those as well. So we're gonna be doing that, but um, that's the general overview, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to it in stages. All right. All right. 
All right, guys. So we got the valve cover off. How many bolts were in that valve cover, Ben? A lot. A lot. And he's got the intake taken off. So valve cover bolts, there's at least 20, and they're on 11 millimeter. So weird. 11 millimeter. And you can see over here the valve cover. Pulls about 20 bolts that go all around the valve cover. And those are the bolts right there. I think that translates to a 7 sixteenths. Okay. But everything I'm using on here is 11 point sockets. So it just, it's, it's close. These came out to be an 11 point 12 millimeter socket holding your rocker arms on here. You can see the proof of the head gasket failure. Mm-hmm. So it was a head gasket. Milky. Milky. So all that's left to do now is, I always take these off in pairs with their push rods and set them to the side in the order that they came out. And then once that's completed, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have 14 head bolts that need to come out. And just so I can help you a little bit more, let's see. Oh, I got the bolts. Feel like they're 12 millimeter. Let's find that. Yeah, and there's the intake. You will need a 12 point 13 millimeter deep well to remove those. I think, if I remember correctly, when I looked at the specs, that's a I think it's around 90 foot pounds of torque, so you're gonna have to exert some force on these animals, both coming out and going in. 13 millimeter, 12 point, you can see how many points these have around there, so 12 point, 13 millimeter deep well. Non-negotiable. What'd you say the torque was on those? I'm gonna check that, but I believe it was 90 foot pounds. Okay. It is a steel head. It's a steel block. So there's no magic involved here, guys. It's just a straightforward torque the crap out of it. <laughs> and it's uh, it's about six foot long. Look at that thing. Yeah, man. It goes all the way back underneath the firewall. Wow. pick up one of these jeeps and you're thinking ha it's a straight six that'll be easy to work on wrong that'll be super simple well it is super simple but it's also super frustrating because it is not an overhead cam it's not overhead all the time and none of that has, you don't have to worry about any of that this is just old school brute strength Last two way back in there, tucked underneath there. Jeez. Uh, almost just not long enough. Wow. And there she is. I'll have to have her edit that music. <clears throat> so there she is, folks. Good job. Now to break this out, I'm going to a half-inch setup. 
I just don't know if this uh, 3 8 is going to cut it. So, I will have to switch gears and retool. You can see the exhaust manifolds are just literally hanging there. Is that gasket going to be okay, you think? It should be a... Oh. Yeah, should be fine. Yep, absolutely. It's going to be great. Everything's going to work out. Absolutely. Life is wonderful. Absolutely. And things go according to plan. Every day. And the good guys always win. That's true. All right. Ben, you hit the radio? We pulled the head bolts out, extracted the head. Now we're just doing a little surface cleanup, scraping off any of the old gasket that wanted to hang around there. As you can see, you will have coolant in every one of these. That has got to be cleaned out. Yeah. You do not want that liquid in that head or that block. Guys, something else we probably should touch on we haven't touched on in the past. Don't buy cheap gaskets. Most definitely. Lesson learned. If you are going to replace your gasket and you would like to do it one time. Get the good gaskets. Get a good gasket. Spend the money. It's worth it. The money you save on the cheap gaskets, you will pay in labor. In labor, doing it twice. <clears throat> Just buy a good gasket. Ignore all those Chinese deals that are out there. And he's using a razor blade to clean that block off. Excuse me, the block off. And your life will be better. Yeah, you can see, guys the chocolate in the head here that gasket was blown once again it's evidence of a bad gas or a cheap head gasket we don't know what the case was nor will we ever but we've been getting a lot of questions about those cheap chinese gaskets yes evidently there's uh you know there's, there's ways to save money that's just not one of them and how it was running was it was just running rough, misfiring, and smoking. And this gasket is going to change all that. So the only thing I don't think that I mentioned that you do have to take off is the uh, idler pulley. This little idler pulley bolts onto the end of the head right there. I didn't see it at first, it, it will have to be removed. 14 millimeter, no big deal. Okay. Once again, guys, make sure you like and subscribe to us, ring the bell for the next posting of content that we have. So what we'll, uh, what we'll do now is we will clean this uh, head up as well. We've gotta have two good surfaces for this to go back on and we're gonna put this back in and take this Jeep Grand Cherokee <laughs> to the wild, wild west. Amen to that. May even have a glass of water. <laughs> PG-13. Because it is hot. Yeah, it's hotter than heck out here, guys. Jeez, find a shady spot if you can. Get a fan. Yeah. And if you're really smart, you get an air conditioner. Yeah. And a closed door shop. All right, guys. <clears throat> so, uh, Ben went ahead and put the head back on. And uh, it's pretty self explanatory. Just set the head back on the, the gasket. And uh, do, you, do you remember what you tore it down to? 
So everything is 110 foot-pounds minus number 11 here, so okay. which is only 100 foot-pounds, and it has to use uh, red Loctite. Okay. So there is a pattern to it. Obviously, Google head torque sequence, and you'll, you'll find it. You start in the middle, and then you work your way towards both ends uh, torque-wise. There's no... Uh, you only have to do each one one time, right? So each bolt, torque it to 110, move to the next. And then once all of them, except for this animal, are at 110, put this one at 100 with the red, red Loctite on it, and you're good to go. And once again, guys, make sure you buy a good quality head gasket. Don't buy those cheap Chinese, um, because you're just gonna have to do it again. Um, <clears throat> we've learned our lesson with that. Just make sure you get a good quality gasket. You're gonna pay more for it, but you don't have to redo it again. So now he's putting the exhaust intake back on, getting ready for the uh, uh, intake manifold. Intake manifold. So after the intake manifold, which is kind of tedious, right? You got to put all these bolts in on the bottom, but you can't tighten them because the intake manifold slides behind this little nut here, and then you have to tighten them both down at the same time. So there's a little bit of an art to. And you can't see them either. Once you get that that intake on there, you can't see them. You got to work your way down there with your hand and just feel, feel for the bolts. Yep, you got to kind of know where they are and just reach down there blind. You can't get to them from underneath. You can't get to them from above. It's it's coming in the side. So after that, then you know after the intake manifold, then we'll put our power steering pump back. We'll put our alternator back and we'll tighten everything up. Put the belt on it. And we should be good to go. Awesome. This whole row of whoop, this whole row of uh, core packs is ready to go back on. Which is obviously more of a pain than anything. is still on in the back and it should work. No big deal. Another trick I always do is while I'm working on this thing I'm letting the uh, battery charger charge up the battery. Do its thing. So that way no surprises when we get ready to put this thing back on the road. I always leave the drain plug out because during this process there will be coolant being dumped into the motor so the plug is out right now the drain pan is underneath it and all of that is just uh, slowly leaking out which is what we want we want to get it out of the block we'll put some fresh oil and a filter on it and uh, add some coolant to it and we should be good to go All right, guys, once again, make sure you like and subscribe, ring the bell <clears throat> for a notification for the next video, for the next build. And uh, so all we're doing now is just <clears throat> putting the intakes back on here, the exhaust is on, and the intake, and the belt, power steering, which is right here. Just bolt that back up to the intake, and then that's it. Like he just said, changed oil, flush everything, Put the belt back on and it's done. Back in business. Back in business. Tearing up the streets, tearing up the dirt, whatever your choice would happen to be. Ninety-nine Jeep Cherokee.